Art, it gives you new eyes. Tolstoy talks about it as um, rain-washed, clear eyes. Civitella Ranieri is an American foundation operating in Italy. We welcome approximately 50 fellows a year from some 90 to 100 nations all over the world. Most of our fellows represent three disciplines, visual arts, music, and then writing. As of our 25th anniversary, we will have had over 1,000 fellows and directors guests come through the foundation. It's an extremely rigorous process to be selected for a fellowship at Civitella. We secure nominations from all over the world, and their applications are reviewed by an international jury. I found the first sentence of my novel at Civitella. I was getting ready to come to lunch, and the first sentence of my novel came to me. Since then, the novel has started. I'm from Nigeria. I've lived in Nigeria all my life. I am beginning to discover, you know, that fiction writers, we're all writing the same thing. It's love, it's death, it's, you know, family. And so in essence, I am doing what every other writer before me has done. I'm just doing it in my own way, because I'm a product of Nigeria. I'm working on a project called 12 Little Spells. It'll culminate in 12 live performances. The spell contains all of the elements the visuals, the presentation, the sound, the words, the symbols. Of ink. I'm a really a composer performer, and so I'm developing some material which is actually being recorded for release um, next month, which is a, a commission for chamber orchestra. Umbria, it's uh, known to be the green art of Italy. One of the Ranieri American cousin, Ursula Corning, asked to, to spend her summers here, so she started renting the castle in 1967. So in 1994, the foundation was created and Ursula was still alive. So there have been years when fellows were here and Ursula was here. In the atrium library, the inscription reads, I shall not be dominated. And for me, this is a really important message to our artists, many who come to us from countries where there is censorship of their work. The symbol of that fireplace is of a diamond that cannot be consumed by flames, and that the spirit of creativity, the diamond, uh, will go on and outlive us all. And as soon as I came here, I was very moved by the actual place itself and also by the history of the place. And so the, the work behind me is a series of sketches, stories from the, the history of the, of the castle itself. I also started integrating things that I saw while on this visit. For example, uh, Piero della Francesca's pregnant Madonna. This is exactly at the, at the heart of what the residency is all about. This kind of freedom and this kind of uh, peace of mind in order to think things over and in order to work and try things which possibly you haven't tried them out before. This time of year, there's no doubt trees eat light. The forest exalted, paint spilled to horizons reluctant to indulge highway. Houses scattered like dropped bird seed. I'm a firm believer that we are what we eat and have been very active in transforming the Civitella kitchen through Romana's guidance so that we really try to buy locally, support local farmers, and to just give good, clean, honest food to the fellows. It's the evening when conversation happens, and I really believe that when governments stop talking to each other, that it's the work of artists, the work of little places like Civitella, that 
create a forum for international conversation. I was born in Beirut in 1984, in the middle of the Civil War. I have an artist name, which is Siska. In the latest film, it's called In the Ruins of Baalbek Studios. Shot on analog is kind of a memorial. And today, this studio is a complete ruin. And all the archive, the film material that was in it, is splattered all over the place. What the state did and what the state is trying to do till today is to completely vanish our history and our cultural history. I begin my book, uh, Reading Lolita in Tehran, with the images of my students. Uh, I decided that I can't teach at the university anymore. I gathered seven of my female students and uh, created a private class. When they came into the house, they were all uniformly dressed in black. And then they would shed their robes, and all of a sudden, a world of color would burst. They all became their individual, unique self. And um, it was quite a scene to behold. So for as long as we are human, we need to imagine and we need to think. No government, no power on earth can change that. Art resists tyranny by revealing the truth. And truth is always dangerous because once you know it, you can't remain silent.